Um, I'm Sharon Gilchrist, this is Peghead Nation, and I'm teaching the beginning mandolin course. Um, thought I'd tell you a little bit about the mandolin I'm playing. This is a Gilchrist mandolin. I cannot say that I made it myself, but um, it is made by a guy named Stephen Gilchrist from Australia, and a little town in No Tuck, Australia. So um, the mandolin, uh, I've had it 20 years this year, and I got it in 94, and um, it's a special one. It was a custom make for a guy named Henry Garrison, and it was made in 1991. I bought it from him in 94, and he had it made, um, well, it was a copy of two different Gibson mandolins. One was the only red sunburst Lloyd Lore ever made. And he owned that Lloyd Lore, the red sunburst, which I saw sitting at a booth next to this one at a trade show in Nashville. Um, <clears throat> I didn't get the red Lloyd Lore, but I got this one. And um, so the sunburst is patterned after that and has a really beautiful um, and worn one piece back that's um, really cool. I um, don't know if you can see all the layers of the finish. I think Gilchrist just does an amazing job of the varnish jobs and um, showing all the different subtleties in the wood. Um, so uh, I've made some modifications. The mandolin originally had a tree of life inlay pattern down the fretboard and uh, Henry Garrison was the first person to ask Stephen Gilchrist to do that. And it was a copy of, I believe, a 1919 Gibson that had a Tree of Life inlay pattern down the neck. And this is a torch and vine inlay pattern on the headstock. And uh, just last year, I took the original fingerboard off to preserve it. I was losing some inlay every time I changed the frets out. It was due for another fret job, so I changed the fretboard and um, learned a big lesson in how much that can affect the tone of the instrument. It's starting to sound like itself again, but for about six months there, it sounded like a newer mandolin. Just I think it had a new piece of wood that hadn't really been played in very much, so it had to get woken up a little bit. Starting to sound like itself, though. Um, what else can I tell you about it? Um, yeah, I ended up having the fingerboard extension scooped out, don't have any frets there. And also the neck, I had at some point had Stephen um, trim this down. It was a thicker neck like a lot of Lloyd Lures have. So he trimmed this down, made it a V-shaped neck. There's no finish on it, which I really am a big fan of that. And um, yeah, that's, that's the story on this mandolin. All right, so gear that I like to use on the mandolin. Um, I don't use that much gear, obviously. I, I do love having a strap. Um, this is, Planet Ma Waves makes a strap that's just like this one. I've had this one since I was 12. I don't know if it was a Planet Waves at that time or not. I don't even know if they existed at that time. But um, anyways, I love using the strap so I can you know, pull against that tension here and get anchored on the instrument. Um, Tuners, again, Planet Waves, has this great little clip on, it's tiny, I'm not going to lose it because I can leave it on even while it's in the case, and it's not sticking out, you know, looking like a, I don't know, maybe a Christmas ornament or some kind of weird thing off the top of the instrument here, it's just nice and little and discreet, and um, the pick, um, well, this is always an evolving thing for most players, including myself, and um, I had a favorite pick over the last couple of years. I had two favorite picks. I ended up losing them both, and um, finally ended up going to this company that you may have heard of. It's called Blue Chip, and I really held out. I did not ever want to go to this company because they're a little pricey. But um, I have to say I kind of fell in love with them. And um, this is the SR50. They have all sorts of shapes and weights. Um, thing I like about this is it's a rounded edge, which gives a little bit of a darker tone, which is nice on the bright sounding mandolin, but it has a little bit of a point to it. So 
it's uh, that nice rounded edge for a mandolin pick that gives a darker tone but it has that point that can help you um, actually grab the string a little easier. And um, the 50 weight is the medium weight, I guess, for the blue chip. And that's a nice balance for this mandolin. This mandolin is X braced and a little deeper than the standard depth for um, the for the body here. So it has a bassier tone naturally. So uh, their heaviest pick was too bassy sounding for this mandolin. So the 50 weight works well. Another important piece of gear on mandolin uh, is the strings. And again, back to Diodario, I use Diodario EXP74s, and I've used those for years. I used to use their J75s, their heaviest gauge, and um, I had the occasion to hang out with some, some of my mandolin heroes at some point in a workshop, and we were all asked which strings we used, and I was the only one using the heavy gauge strings, and they all, you know, some pretty, uh, aggressive Monroe style players were wondering why I used heavy gauge encouraged me to try the 74s so ever since then I've used the 74s and I really like the EXP um, I didn't really think I would like having a coating on um, I really can't tell the coatings on after a couple of days but what I can tell I went back to Jay's 74s at some point and um, the I felt like they were a little more taut in the feel um, and the EXPs to me have just a little more fluid approach. All right, so that is all the gear that I use and maybe I'll just play you a little tune now and give you a sampling of how it all sounds together. This is a Bill Monroe tune and more obscure Monroe tune, it's called My Father's Footsteps. Thanks so much. I'm Sharon Gilchrist. This is Peg Head Nation.